Hi, my name's Salvatore Sorce. I'm a voice coach and accent coach and tonight I'm basically working with a group of students that I worked with last year on Shakespeare and getting Shakespeare connected to them physically rather than in a, in a way that can be construed as uh, as an actor would, like as I've just heard some reactions from them um, when I said we're going to explore Shakespeare, what, what were the challenges they found, uh, but they said um, one of them did this face. Um, one of them <laughs> said uh, um, it, it's, it's, it's hard to make it sound like it's not a poem, um, it's hard to make it sound, and the other, another one said it's hard to make it sound like it's theirs, like they own it. What was the other thing you said, Miranda? Um, it can be alienating until you do what we did. Alienating until we did what we did. Okay, so thanks Miranda. So um, as always with these, uh, this gr wonderful group of students I worked with last year on the Raw Shakespeare project, um, what we want to, I wanted to do was revisit and find how we can use physical exercises to get the words into them. And I really want people to connect with the language because it means so much to so many people when it's said in a simple and truthful way. What you're going to see now is um, an overview of the exercises that we did this earlier this evening uh, with the students and uh, I hope you can see this is the sort of work that I'm really trying to explore in order to get a physical connection to Shakespeare rather than a literal or academic one because I think Shakespeare is so often misinterpreted from a perspective of it has to sound beautiful and it doesn't. It can sound raw, it can sound real, it can sound like it comes from the heart, it comes from the gut. Um, it should, that's how it should be. Shakespeare teaches um, people how to think. It, so it teaches uh, people how to, uh, uh, to breathe. It teaches people how to act. If you just follow the simplicity of what it is he gives you. So let's have a look at what he does. Really? Okay, so I'm here with Maisie and Miranda, two of the wonderful students that I had last year on the Raw Shakespeare project, Measure for Measure and the Midsummer Night's Dream. And so can you just tell me, uh, what did we start off, how did we start off this evening? What did we do? We had the, uh, Got the text out and started breaking up the thoughts. So which text was it? Um, it's the prologue from Romeo and Juliet. Fantastic. So we've, uh, we looked at the text we, and we started breaking down the thoughts. How did I get you to break down the thoughts? Just marking on the paper, you know, where the commas are, where the full stops are, just the full thoughts, their thoughts. Okay, and we looked at how, because it's a sonnet, we looked at how the sonnet was broken up, and had I give you a, specific, a very specific form about that. Would yeah, you remember what that was we had like, we had a beginning, and then we had like another section, which was kind of like the intro, like after the beginning, and then we had another section, which was kind of funneling into a conclusion. Great words. And then we had the end, which was like really, like where all the words meet. Do you remember what I said about that? Because we broke it up into three fours and yeah. then a twelve. And I said, and exactly right. The intro, the exploration, then the fumbling, beautiful word, and then the conclusion. Do you remember what I said to you about that last third, what we do with that last third, what can potentially happen? Okay, you speed up the pace a little bit. Yeah. Um, because otherwise the audience was already there and you need to take them. You need to take them, you need to drag them, yeah. push them along exactly. and say, this exactly. is the story, yeah. this is the story. Because fundamentally, I think one of the things that um, I spoke about in the intro here was some of you were saying it sounds poetical or it sounded like... You can let it kind of skip over your head at first, I think. If it's too quick and you're not getting each word, you're like, what? Okay, I'm trying to remember what you last said. And right, okay, cool, cool. And you um, said... I said sometimes it can be a bit alienating unless you do the work we did. Yeah, and you have to do yeah. the work that we did. Yeah. One of the other things we did, we looked at not just the thoughts, but what was within the thoughts and what was that called? Like the subtext, the sub yeah. Not subtext, sub... Subclause. Thank you, subclause. Yeah. What's a subclause? So it's kind of almost like an aside. A so it's something, aside. Yeah. yeah. It's kind of something which doesn't necessarily really, really need to be said, but it is said. It clarifies the main yeah, thought. Exactly. So for example, can you give me the first line and give me an example of the first line, both of you, just give me one half and the other half. So two households, both alike in dignity. So that would be... So whilst it is, it's not really a subclause, it could be looked at as like a subclause, it hasn't got the same bones of the sonnets. And that's something that I would come back to and talk about in terms of the, and we haven't discussed it earlier, but the spine of the, 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 the sonnet. What is really integral in the sonnet for us to really share to the audience. So if I just said two households in fair Verona, um, where, uh, where from ancient grudge break to new mutiny, 
we've still got the essence of what that sonnet's about, haven't we? We're just adding other information. So let's look at one of the first exercises I gave you with regards to using uh, the sonnets, uh, using getting the using board to get into the language of the sonnets. So can we just go? Um, we'll come back. We'll come back in a second. So what we're doing now? Uh, I've got the music again, really about connecting with the physicality of the language. I've got I've had this crazy idea of using balls to um, bounce into the language to really get the physicality into the language. So that's what they're doing. They're using the language, they're using the balls to fit into the verse and literally connect with it in that one. Can you go back? And I want you to go back to the beginning. And this time, I want you to do what we did. Um, what we did with the throwing the hands, uh, throwing the ball between the two hands, so we could actually see where you are understanding where the stressed syllable and the unstressed syllable is, or otherwise known as the iambic pentameter. Yeah. So going from two households, both are alike in dignity. Off you go. Two households, both are alike in dignity. In Verona, where we lay our seed. From ancient grudge, break to new mutiny. Where civil blood makes civil hands unclean. Okay, Rumble. and now put the balls down and just, just say the lines for me. Two households, both alike in dignity, in fair Verona, where we lay our seam. From ancient grudge, break to new mutiny, where civil blood makes civil hands unclean. Perfect, we'll come back in a second. Okay, so when we're actually using, uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to use the ball to pass back and forth. So there is a, a sense of connecting and making the point to the other person, or making sure the language lands on the other person because fundamentally a sonnet is not a piece of poetry because Shakespeare doesn't mean it to be uh, poetical, he means it as, a, as, a, as, a, as a, a means of communication and that's fundamentally, think of a sonnet as a little play because that's essentially what it is. So um, Joe and Maisie, Joe from Measure for Measure from last year and Maisie again from Measure for Measure, they're literally going to pass between the thoughts of the first few lines of the sonnet, so we can see a con about the connection. Careful, again, we're, 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 we're throwing the ball gently, aren't we, Joe? <laughs> <laughs> Only gently. So, um, <laughs> focus on connecting, connecting with the other person, and, and absolutely sharing what you have to say back to the other person. Yeah? Off you go. Two households. Both alike in dignity. In fair Verona. Where we lay our seam. From ancient grudge break to new mutiny. Where civil blood makes civil hands unclean. From forth the fatal loins of these two foes. A pair of star-crossed lovers take their life. Whose misadventure piteous overthrows. Doth with their death bury their parents. Good, blood. stop there. Okay, let's go. Uh, we're now going to look at another exercise that we use. Um, and this comes from, it's strange enough, it's a kind of a hybrid of a cock exercise, a push and pull. So I'm just going to get Joe and Maisie to use um, the... Ball, um, do, you, are you, feel, do you feel okay using Maisie or do, would you rather push against me? I'm totally cool with whatever. Game for it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fine, bring it on. Right, so basically what they're going to do is they're going to do exactly the same thing. Exactly the same thing, but they're going to be pushing both of them against the ball. So body weight, absolutely against the ball. Because I want them to get the body tension in there because I have got this strange little thing going on in my head about how through if we engage all the muscles of the body what we're going to do is essentially uh, get the words down a little bit deeper so when we do release all that tension in a moment the words should sit a little bit deeper so let's just try we're going to do a push first and then they're going to both grab hold of the ball and pull for all their work and there, there's going to be a bit of a tussle yeah. but I think it'll be worth it because these are evenly matched. Yes. <laughs> okay, so remember, you're going to push with all your might so you can really lean into him because he will lean into you, I promise you. Off you go. Two households, both alike in dignity, in fair Verona where we lay our siege, from ancient grudge break to new mutiny, where civil blood makes civil hands unclean, from forth the fatal loins of these two foes, a pair of star crossed lovers take their life. Whose misadventure piteous overthrows Doth with their death bury their parents' Pull. strife The fearful passage of their death-marked love And the continuance of their parents' rage Which But their children's end Nought could remove Is now the two-hour traffic of our stage 
The witch. If you with patience in oh, attend. What's here shall miss. Our toil shall strive to mend. And drop the ball. Go straight to the sonnet. Two households. Both, both alike, alike in dignity. To each other. In fair Verona. Sorry again. Two households. Both alike in dignity. In fair Verona. Where we lay our scene. From ancient grudge break to new mutiny. Where civil blood makes civil hands unclean. From forth the fatal loins of these two foes. A pair of star-crossed lovers take their life. Whose misadventured piteous overthrows. Doth with their death bury their parents' strife. The fearful passage of their death-marked love. And the continuance of their parents' rage. Which? But their children's end. Nor could remove. Is now the two hours' traffic of our stage. So which? If you with patient ears attend. What here shall miss. Our toil shall strive to mend. And, right, so tell me, right now, what does that feel like, having done that? I felt like I was just ready to go straight into it. Like, go fly through it sort of thing. But and, not speak to And it. you hadn't actually, you'd learnt whilst you had learnt the text before, did you have any previous experience of it apart from having learnt it? Yeah, I've seen it. I've seen it, like, in, in the films and I've seen it on stage. But you've never actually gone out there and spoken to yourself? No, not word for word. Maisie? Uh, it feels like it's coming from a deeper place because it's like, you've pulled it so much, you've pushed it so much that now it's, like you're almost not putting the lid on it, but it's like you're trying to not let it be what it could be. Yeah, it feels like you're, yeah. you're trying to keep it up. Yeah. Like, say that again. I'm, that's really interesting. Go on, say that You're again. trying to like not let it be what it could be, so it's like it's deeper rather than you pushing it to be something. Right. Okay. So it feels like it's a more real and natural connection, yeah. rather than this forced idea of what, of what it should be, of what yeah. it should sound. From forth the fatal loins of these two foes, a pair of star-crossed lovers take their life. Whose misadventure piteous overthrows, doth with their death bury their parents' strife. Pull. The fearful passage of their death-marked love, and the continuance of their parents' rage. Which, but there? Which, but their children's end. Not could remove. It's now the two hours' traffic of our stage. The which? If you with patient ears attend, what here shall miss? Our foil shall strive to mend. Two households, both alike in dignity. In fair Verona. Where we lay our scene. From ancient grudge break to new mutiny. Where civil blood makes civil hands unclean. From forth the fatal loins of these two foes. A pair of star-crossed lovers take their life. Whose misadventured piteous overthrows. Doth with their death bury their parents' strife. The fearful passage of death marked love, and the continuance of their parents' rage. Which? With if you. What but their children's end? But their children's end. Nought could remove. Is now the two hours' traffic of our stage. The which? If you with patient ears attend. What here shall miss? Our toil shall strive to mend. Okay, tell me what that was like going through that process this evening of the work that we've done. Very, very brief as it has been, but just what your thoughts and feelings have been. The whole. Yeah. Um, it's good. What I like about it is it distracts you from the obvious, so you're not focusing on what you normally focus on as an actor, which is the words and the delivery. You're distracted from all that, so it kind of just comes from a different place. Right, okay. It's a bit Meisnerish, isn't it? <laughs> it is a bit Meisnerish. Yeah? Um, but you're, somehow the words and, and everything else are still going in. Yeah. I yeah. think it's actually quite a good technique for learning minds. Yes. Okay. Okay, that's, I hadn't thought of that, but yeah. that's another point. I get quite reason. neurotic sometimes when I'm delivering a freshly learned monologue. Yeah. Whereas once I've done all of that, it was. You didn't look like you had any any real concern. It was like, that. yeah, you know, that feeling you get that wasn't there. Right, Maisie. It feels like you own it more. I think, like 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 you were saying, rather than it being alien, it feels like it, you're saying it's coming from you, rather than. And your voice, exactly. rather than someone else's, yeah, or, so, exactly. or someone's preconceived voice. Yeah, Miranda. Yeah, that whole feeling of because of doing the physical work, where you're almost your voice, like is out of the equation because you're like it's so much deeper. So, you so as you've seen, what we've looked at this evening is a physical exploration, or at least a beginning of a physical exploration. And this is part of the research that I'm doing right now with regards to how do we get actors to a, a um, embody Shakespeare um, from a physical perspective and get them out of their heads. Um, so you've seen a, an overview of exercises that I've used here and you've also heard what they were thinking beforehand, their impressions and perceptions of Shakespeare beforehand and also what their, their experience was and how they felt afterwards. And one of the lovely things I think I heard there was about it being their voices 
and that it was being distracted from thinking too much about the words back in, neurotic and paranoid about the words, because they actually all did say the words pretty much word perfect, um, and that it wasn't alien to them anymore. It was a language that was achievable and accessible. So this is part of the work that I'm continuing to look at uh, within the Shakespeare um, physical voice, um, and we'll see what happens in the future. Do you know how we found it? No, just tell me the story, tell me the sonnet. Tell oh, me the prologue. Oh, to do it, okay. Two, Two households. Both alike in dignity. In fair Verona, where we lay our scene. <laughs> From ancient grudge. Here you go again. <laughs>